What's up everyone, welcome back to another What If video. So as you can probably tell by the title, today's video is going to be somewhat of an odd topic, but something that could have definitely happened. Now, Tarbell's been around for a while, but not a lot has been done with him. I mean, the concept of Vegeta having a brother being somewhere in the universe, it seems like kind of a big thing to ignore. And I was wondering, with all these possibilities, there might be a way to make a good what-if idea about him. Now, there are a ton of what-ifs about Saiyans being sent to different planets from where they were originally sent to. Or, in the case of one of my videos, having different circumstances for their birth, like being born as twins alongside a brother. So I wanted to try and apply that same concept to Tarbal, seeing what could happen if maybe, instead of being sent somewhere off planet because he's weak, if he was sent to be raised by Vegeta instead. Also, be sure to drop a like on this video and let's try and hit a like goal of 2500 likes, and if we hit that, I can continue this what if because I'll know that there's enough interest in it. So let's begin discussing what would happen if Vegeta raised Tarbal. So this all starts way in the days of Dragon Ball Minus, I guess. King Vegeta steals Bardock's move and tries to send his baby away somewhere else. So we don't really know too much about Tarbal's backstory, but we do know that King Vegeta sent him somewhere else because he was a little too weak to be a good Saiyan. So let's take that concept and reverse that a little. While Vegeta's first son, also named Vegeta, had a really good power level and seemed to have a lot of promise, it seems like Tarbal, his second son, doesn't really live up to that potential. Even as the son of an elite warrior, as a child it seems Tarbal is nothing like his brother. Well, at least not right now. Vegeta is currently off-planet with Nappa and Raditz, and he's acting as a formidable Saiyan warrior and making very good progress. That gets King Vegeta thinking. Maybe if he sent Tarbal to where Vegeta is, he could grow up to be a much stronger warrior. And he wouldn't be as passive as he seems. King Vegeta sends a transmission to his son's group, saying they'll have a new member joining them that they should whip into shape. They of course know that it's Vegeta's younger brother, Tarbal. The space pod lands where they are, and essentially now they're made into babysitters. Well, really, Nappa is. Now he has three kids to look after. And also, not too long after this, Planet Vegeta does explode, so... Tarbal's stuck with them now. No longer as a temporary thing, but as a full-time member of the group. Even though he's a little kid right now. Tarbal grows up alongside Vegeta, Raditz, and Nappa over the next few years and decades. While Tarbal is a little bit weak, Vegeta does have a soft spot for him because he is an elite Saiyan by birth. And also, seemingly as the last few Saiyans there, this group is really the only people that Vegeta bonds with, so Tarbal's personality will be completely warped here. I feel like he'd be kind of a mix of Vegeta and Raditz because he grew up alongside them. While he is a bit more analytical than the other two, of course he displays that sense of Saiyan pride that the whole group upholds. As for his strength, he'd most likely be one of the weaker members of the group, possibly around Raditz's level, although it's kind of hard to speculate where he'd be at this point. Despite him being weak relative to the rest of the group, I mean, he's a Saiyan warrior after all, so of course he's feared everywhere. The group works under Frieza like normal, but secretly, they decide that they do want to rebel a bit, and try and recruit more members for their team. It turns out that Raditz actually has a brother on Earth named Kakarot, and he might make for a great player on the team if they're able to recruit him. So, Raditz goes on his mission to recruit Kakarot, and it's a huge failure. Somehow he died. Oh, and Kakarot did. But apparently there's something on Earth called Dragon Balls and they're going to be used to revive Kakarot, so he will be back in a year's time. So Vegeta plans on heading there alongside Nappa but looks out for Tarbal and decides that he wants him to stay behind. They tell Tarbal it's because they feel like they can handle it alone, but frankly, Vegeta feels that Tarbal is a bit too weak. He doesn't outright say this, but deep down, Tarbal knows that this is why his brother wanted him to stay behind. Vegeta does feel a little bad about it, but he can't dwell on it too much. Tarbal is kind of a weak link right now. Well, at least Nappa thinks so. On their journey to Earth, Vegeta begins wondering. With all the stuff heating up around space, how is Tarbal going to make it? A little bit disheartened by being left behind, instead of going into a depression about it, Tarbal decides that this is going to actually help motivate him. He's been taking it kind of easy as Vegeta's been heading a lot of the missions. Even if he was genetically disadvantaged and born weaker, maybe if he works hard, he'll be able to impress his brother. Right now, Vegeta sadly does feel like Tarbal's a little bit of dead weight, but he doesn't want it to be that way. But he can't help but feel disappointed. Maybe it's for the best that he didn't come to Earth because he probably would have died. If Raditz did, well, Tarbal probably wouldn't have made it either. In that year that Vegeta and Nappa take to go to Earth, Tarbal begins training more and more on his own. This was the straw that broke the camel's back and actually encouraged him to train harder, making him realize that everything he's been doing so far still wasn't enough. And apparently that Kakarot guy on Earth was pretty weak and he still was able to kill Raditz. So maybe if a low-class warrior can get that strong, he definitely can as well with hard work. As well as training, he picks up more missions from Frieza, not only to gain more trust within the Frieza Force, but also has more experience for him. This purposely puts him in danger, which means he'll be able to exploit his Zenkais a little bit, even though it is painful. But even though it might not be ideal, at least he knows it'll work. 
the power boost he gets, the experience he gets, and all the training he gets from these missions, as well as everything he does when he trains alone, it all helps him get stronger. This will be the last time he's looked down upon. He has to have a mindset more like his older brother. And while Vegeta did say he could handle this mission, it turns out he couldn't. A year later, Vegeta's back on Planet 79 in terrible condition, and is immediately placed in a healing pod. While he did escape barely, Nappa died, so it was kind of a big loss. After some time, Vegeta exits his healing chamber, and is surprised to be greeted by Tarble. He doesn't want to talk about the mission, but as soon as he's out of the healing chamber, he notices something different about his brother. The way he carries himself, it's different from before. He seems noticeably stronger, also even scarred up a bit, and this tells Vegeta everything he needs to know. He's actually pretty impressed. He's glad to know that Tarble hasn't been slacking off this past year. He became a lot more independent and improved himself a ton. Tarble was never some insane prodigy like Vegeta was as a kid. He had to work much harder, and his injuries show this. And the great thing is that he still has his tail, unlike Vegeta. These two are the last Saiyans remaining. Well, excluding Kakarot and Gohan because they're not evil. And I guess Broly and Paragus too, but they don't know they exist. Yada yada, I'm kind of getting off course. They think they're the last two Saiyans, even if it might not be the right assumption. The two of them begin conversing. They recognize this fact, and they're encouraged to get revenge on Frieza right now, as the last two fighters of their race. Vegeta has a plan. By using the Dragon Balls, he wants to make them both immortal. But how is he going to do that if he's not on Earth anymore? Tarble asks this, and then Vegeta gives him an answer. They're taking a trip to Namek. The two set course for the planet and head off, almost immediately after Vegeta is healed. But of course, they're not going to be alone. Far from it. They land on the planet and they start their search, but soon after, they notice a bunch of other ships landing. Wait. Freeze's army is here too? How do they find out about this? The two are angered, but they feel like it's nothing they can't handle. They make their way throughout Namek, fighting some fodder Frieza soldiers, taking on people like Kui, and luckily enough for them, they actually get a few Dragon Balls. The two feel very happy right now. Even with Frieza here, they might actually be able to make it out of this. However, on another part of the planet, a group of Earthlings land on the planet. Of course, I'm referring to Krillin, Gohan, and Bulma. Krillin and Gohan are pretty concerned right now because immediately, they sense Vegeta is here alongside someone else. Oh, and also that huge army that's here too. So, it seems like they're not the only ones on Namek. But their mission continues pretty much like normal at first. They encounter Dodoria, they meet Dende, and after escaping from Dodoria, they head to Guru's. Considering the threat of another Saiyan on this planet, alongside a stronger Vegeta and that entire army, they decide they're all gonna stick together to remain safe. So Gohan, Krillin, and Dende all head to Guru's at once leaving Dodoria to be picked on by Vegeta and Tarble. Dodoria is not too scared to fight them. He thinks the two are weaklings, especially Tarble. But clearly, he doesn't know what's happened with them in the past year. This battle between him and the Saiyan brothers goes pretty quickly, and in order to try and save himself, he tells him about what truly happened to planet Vegeta. And while this information was something that Vegeta and Tarble didn't know before, all it really does is serve to piss them off. With a dual Gallic gun, they kill Dodoria. This only fuels the fire of their anger, as well as their motivation to defeat Frieza. They'll have to get those Dragon Balls at any cost. Frieza is the sole person responsible for everything that's happened in their life. Their planet, the Saiyans, all their power, taken away by Frieza. But after encountering Dodoria, there is something else that they want to chase after. They notice that Dodoria was already kind of winded when they fought him, as well as detecting two powers that were flying away from Dodoria, almost as if he was chasing them. What target could be so valuable that Dodoria had to chase them down? They decide to investigate, but it seems their keys have completely disappeared now. They could try and fly off in the general direction that the group headed off to, but for all they know it might just be a waste of time. So out of luck here, they decide to just search more villages, and they are able to get one more Dragon Ball. Right now, they're at a total of three, but of course they're not going to go undetected. Eventually, they encounter Zarbon too. Immediately, he incapacitates Tarble, trying to make the fight more fair so he only has to face Vegeta now. Zarbon makes some quick work of Vegeta, beating him senseless and even knocking him out. He then turns around to pick up Tarble so he can take the two of them back to Frieza's ship, but when he looks back, Tarble's gone. And then he sees something up in the sky, a giant glowing ball. Tarble eventually then comes back into view, although this time as a great ape. Although heavily injured and a little bit weakened from creating the artificial moon, right now there's a massive gap in power between him and Zarbon. Zarbon even goes into his ugly form, but it does absolutely nothing. Scared out of his mind, he's eventually stepped on by a giant Tarble, who used the last of his energy to crush Zarbon and finish him off for good, as he then passes out and reverts to normal, having been severely injured beforehand. Detecting all this commotion on a scouter, and seeing a great ape in the distance, Frieza obviously decides to check this out. He's disgusted that Zarbon couldn't handle these two by himself, and when he arrives, he sees the two passed out Saiyans 
and a Zarbon pancake. A little bit disgusting, but whatever. He drags the two Saiyans to his ship to heal them so he can get all the info he needs out of them. They clearly have info on the Dragon Balls and possibly have some hidden somewhere. With the battle being a bit tense, their armor got pretty messed up, especially Tarbul who was nearly killed. So once they wake up from their healing, they also have new armor on which they're pretty surprised about. Really, just my excuse to give Tarbul a newer look. Also kind of weird, Frieza took the time to clothe them. Ew. They also feel like they're much stronger than before, with Tarbul even getting a massive boost greater than his brother's, due to his worse injuries. Gradually, he's closing the gap in power, both intentionally and unintentionally like in this case. The two share a grin, realizing that right now is the perfect opportunity to steal a Dragon Ball and escape. Plus, they're pretty happy with their new power. They create a diversion and steal Frieza's Dragon Balls. It seems like he and his group were able to gather three of them here, blowing a hole in the ship, distracting Frieza, and taking the Dragon Balls. They speed off undetected by the Space Emperor. They head back to the lake where they hid their other Dragon Balls, and now, it seems like they'll have six total. They're so close, they only need one more Dragon Ball. They arrive at the lake where the other Dragon Balls should be, and the three of them are missing. What? Vegeta gets unrationally angry. And of course, Tarbul's pretty pissed too, but he tries to come up with a plan. It definitely wasn't the Frieza Force that took the Dragon Balls, so it might have been whoever Dodoria was chasing before. They focus, and eventually, they sense three different powers, all very faint, but they're flying directly away from the lake. They miss this group by mere minutes. As he's developing his ability to sense Ki more and more, Vegeta somewhat recognizes these key signatures. No, it can't be. Can these actually be some fighters from Earth? Of course, this was Krillin, Gohan, and Dende, all of whom stole the Dragon Balls, after having their potential unlocked by Guru. Right now, they're heading back to Bulma to store these, as well as the one that they actually got from Guru himself. Meanwhile, in space, Goku gets ever so closer to Namek, and all the while, Frieza has some plans of his own, and decides to call for some more useful help. All of this saga is coming together quickly. Frieza has made the choice to summon the Ginyu Force. And while Goku heads towards the planet, they're getting closer too. Back to the brothers, the two decide to split up for now. Vegeta decides he's going to guard the Dragon Balls that they just stole, and Tarbul decides that he's going to go and pursue the Earthlings, not knowing how strong they are right now. Tarbul eventually is successful, and he encounters Gohan and Krillin, who are pretty confused to see who he is. This Saiyan looks very similar to Vegeta. And then they find out that he's actually Vegeta's brother. So it seems there was one more Saiyan that they didn't know about. But no matter, they're not too concerned. Tarbul is ready to fight them, and they're prepared as well, feeling like they outclass him even individually. Right as the fight is about to begin, they're interrupted when they sense powers coming to Namek. It's the Ginyu Force. Tarbul immediately knows who these guys are. And just as soon as they land, they're heading closer and closer to the group, having sensed the recent surge in Ki. Although Tarbul would love to beat up these guys right now, it seems they've been forced into an enemy of my enemy situation and eventually, they're tracked down by the Ginyu Force. The Ginyu Force could just kill them right away, but they toy with this group a bit and get the Dragon Balls from them. But just as they're about to finish the job, everyone senses another power coming towards Namek, and the Ginyu Force turns on their scouters to see what's going on. Another ship has just landed, and an individual is coming closer and closer to this group. Of course, this is Goku, who's finally landed on the planet. While this group did get beat up a little by the Ginyu Force, thankfully Goku's there to save them. Krillin, Gohan, and Tarbul take on Goldo together, while Goku takes on Jason Birder, and having the whole body swap debacle with the Ginyu. Thankfully though, this is restored, and since Dende is there, he's able to get healed up right away, as well as the rest of the group. Dende is very hesitant to heal Tarbul, but he doesn't seem to be as vicious as Vegeta, and they kinda need the extra firepower right now anyways. So, he gets healed as well and gets a nice little boost from it, but not nearly as much as Goku's. But of course, they are very wary of Tarbul. I mean, why wouldn't they be? Look at who he's aligned with. Another good thing that came out of the situation is that Goku gets to save his Senzu beams, just in case. It's great that they all had Dende there. But there is one loose end that they didn't tie up. Besides the fact that Frieza is still out there somewhere, Raccoon was able to escape, and is currently heading off in Vegeta's direction, sensing his power and assuming that he might have Dragon Balls. After everyone's healed, Tarbul focuses, and he's able to sense where Raccoon's heading to. It's directly towards his brother. While he doesn't want to work with these Earthlings, it seems he's really not in a position of power here, so he has no choice but to make an appeal to them, because otherwise, Vegeta will probably die as well as him. At least this might give the two brothers a little bit of safety. Swallowing his pride, he asks for the group's help. But can they really trust Tarbul? Should they even try and save Vegeta? This could be a trap for all they know, and they could get double-crossed in the end. Let's leave off here for now. So what will happen between the group and Tarbul? 
What's going to happen when Raccoon encounters Vegeta? And most importantly, how will this arc end up being resolved? And what will Frieza be up to? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below, and I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like, and let's try to hit the like goal that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe, as well as hitting the bell icon to get notified about any future parts of this what if, or any other videos that I upload on my channel. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you all in the next one.